So hi everyone, good evening. Hope you are doing extremely, extremely well. As you all know, today we have event of space of Web three point two, and uh, basically for this event we have Mr. Shushant Pandey with us. He is building StreakX. StreakX is a company as a startup, which is basically uh, making communication frictionless. Uh, and uh, and he is a founder of the startup called StreakX, which is fixing the broken communication in Web three. And welcome, sir. Welcome to Squad Growth. uh please introduce yourself you. and your company your motive and let's start the event thank you so much thank you so much shalya for inviting me to squad booth to address to the young students uh, out there who want to enter web3 who want to understand what web3 is all about but before i jump on to the technicalities of web3 or what happens in web3 uh, i'll just introduce myself uh, briefly so as said by shorya i'm uh, founder of streaks uh, which is a startup and uh, in web3 space so i'm solving problem for web3 projects who have who are investing a lot in their communities but are not getting return on their investments so that's where our product comes in we increase the return on investment for each and every project uh, when they do the community rewards like giveaways and airdrops so i have a lot of interest i have uh, i have a lot of uh, things that i work in so i work as a tokenomics tokenomics expert in web3 space so i consult projects helping them build their game economy their whole ecosystem and how to design their token how much of allocation should be there so basically how incentives are uh, defined in your project and everything like that apart from that i paint and do a lot of other stuff so which is visible to you on the screen so i'll not go you much on what i do or what i am and rather just pass it on to learning more about what web3 is all about so uh, shorya help me with this can we do a poll or something or can you just tell me when i ask the question so i have a question that how many of you are actually aware about web3 how many of you know about web3 can we do a First, hand raise or something definitely we can yeah. just uh, so people as you know uh, people as you know we this is the third event of the web3 space uh, web3 community about the web3 community so i guess you all must know like what is web3 and for that uh, just say uh, just type a message little message in the community so that we can get an idea yeah i mean even a hand right. raise would be fine all right basically anything that can give an idea Yes, so people people know and people are saying that yes, we are aware. Uh, Ankur is saying okay. yes. This I am attending this. I am attending this kind of event second time. So I know Good. what is Web three, what is crypto. I know the basic stuff and mm -hmm. similar similar on the answers Good. from the other people as well. Good. So basically, I need not to get into the technicalities of Web three. I can explain to you in a much better way then. So Web three is basically a new newly defined internet for each and every person. so if you see that how internet has developed initially it was web 1 what happened in web 1 was that you had access to certain kind of information but you can't do anything with that information you can't share it with anyone you can't interact or comment on that information which was available online for you then came web 2.0 which was around 2002 2004 at that time a lot of blogging sites started popping in and in those blogging sites there were comment boxes there were places where you can share different kind of opinions of yours and people started talking a conversation started over there then came social media and everything was redefined people started sharing information the mood of uh, the internet where uh, the internet which enabled you to access data or information online now has turned into a forum where you can talk to people and you can understand the uh, the basics and nitty gritties about anything and you can interact with anyone however what happened was while these in, in web 2.0 while each and every of every one of these products were built uh, were built the data that every user shared uh, started to be started uh, to be misused and the reason was when uh, internet started it started with the vision of democratizing the data the problem with democratizing the data is you cannot create a business out of social service that is giving out the data for free so people started monetizing that data 
and how they started monetizing i'll give you a very simple example of facebook which everyone is aware of they use your data to modify or to give you special things which are fit for your niche basically things which you would like to interact with let's suppose you are a college going student you want to buy some bags you want to buy some phones you want to buy some phone covers they'll start showing you ads which are relevant to you using your data but the problem with this is that this data which is freely available for people to use can also be misused by the company so that's why web3 was web3.0 was born and the vision and idea behind web3.0 was to secure these people to secure our data from being misused that is very simply what web3 is all about the vision of web3 is very large it is about decentralizing uh, decentralizing the ownership and decision making power so basically you as a owner of a data you have control over what you do with it you have control what a decision a company is making so let's suppose facebook is trying to implement one feature and one change in their app you can't tell them that revoke it stop it take it back that happens only after that uh, feature has come out in the market and people show rage against it that's why web3 came and what happens in web3 is let's take an example of uniswap which is a decentralized exchange in web3 if any change has to be made in uniswap people put a proposal out they say we want to do so and so things how many of you are with me everyone comes there they vote and whichever the majority chooses people go with that decision uh, go with that decision this is all about you are basically part of the product you have a share and ownership of the product and you are also one making the decision for the product and you are not the product which was used to be the case in step 2.0 now uh, if there is any question from anyone side about web3 i'm open to take it before i move on to next section yes sir there are questions uh, but i'm not sure that we should take them right now or not uh, you decide the question is uh, how will web3 revolution, uh, revolutionize the online user experience okay that that's a that's a pretty interesting question how user experience will evolve that depends on a lot of factors firstly uh, you all would have heard about metaverse nfts and all those things if not i can explain it to you or uh, else i can jump right on to the explanation uh, people are aware of the terms because there's a okay. third end of the web cool. yeah okay okay fuck it's fine then i'm 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 assuming that you all know these jargons and i'll rather just jump on to talking about things so basically uh, when we talk about user experience in web3 it's going to be enhanced because you have you have the ownership of everything which you uh, which you basically own so normally what happens is let's suppose you are on netflix you have bought netflix subscription you are watching something over there but what you do in netflix is just uh, native to netflix only if you go on amazon uh, amazon prime your data your uh, what kind of things that you like is not being transferred over there with a web3 what can happen is your data can be stored in a smart contract very simply that what kind of things you like and not and then that can be then simulated in each and every experience that you want to take in every platform that you use so basically if you move from netflix to amazon prime you're having the same kind of recommendation coming to you which you like and in this process your data is not being misused not only that let's suppose you are in one particular game you are playing uh, you are playing gta you have correct you have created one character for yourself now everything that you have accumulated in gta can be made turned into an nft for you and that nft can then later be used in valorant and that is going to increase your xp points over there so that you have a better experience so basically there is more and more chances of interoperability between different kind of products that you are using so there is more opportunity for you to have a customized experience tailored for you across platforms and not just in one limited ecosystem in simple terms if i say you use apple 
Apple has their own ecosystem, which is restricted to their product. Let's imagine uh, you can come from you. You can go from Apple to Microsoft uh, or or Windows ecosystem. That is that is something which is unimaginable uh, right now. No company can do that. Uh, create such an experience because there is a monopoly and hegemony of Apple in that domain. What ha- what will happen with Web three is or with the blockchain technology is that this ownership is decentralized. No one can create their own monopoly. Basically, you as a user are the one running the market, not the people at the top. So you are the one making the decision. The moment you decide that you don't want to use a product like that, it will go out of market very soon because then there will be something which will be created to tackle that, which you can't do in the current Web2 market right now. Got it. Sir. So basically, you as a user have more and more take and say in that. Yep, got it. Okay. Cool. Let me move on to the next section, and that is how to join Web three. Cool. So I've told you briefly about what Web three is all about, what can happen, what you can do, what kind of products you can build. Let me just give you an overview of what kind of products or what kind of things exist in Web three, or what is the expanse of Web three. So basically, Web three includes blockchain technology. Web three includes uh, AI. Interestingly, which is something which is very new because uh, Web three is all about the new technological as advancement of this age, and this age of advance advancement definitely agrees on democratizing the data, but also on ownership of the users' data. So you have AI, you have blockchain, you have AR, VR, metaverse in simple terms, and you have NFTs, which are a sign of your digital ownership. So basically, these are the three to four major avenues in which you will see Web three growing. Now, each one of them come with a lot of opportunities for you. Let's take up for an example blockchain, something in which I work and something in which I have built the product. I'll talk less about my product and rather talk about tokenomics, something which I started with. I was an economics grad. Uh, I was trying to understand Web three inside out. And uh, I had to write a dissertation in uh, final semester of my college in the last year of my college. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to write on a typical economics topic. I want to understand Web three. Let's take up something on NFT. I examined the different data of NFT to observe the bubble in the NFT market. That gave me a deep insights into different uh, kind of things which a person can do with NFTs, a different kind of things which they can build with NFT NFTs. And how you can be a part of the community just by owning one particular kind of NFTs. So basically, then I started exploring different avenues uh, related to economics, and then I came across tokenomics. What happens in tokenomics is you basically pin down upon. Uh, so let's suppose you're building a project which is of game, and in that game project, you t- you have to define. how a user come on to your platform uses different kind of product features and functionalities and then based on that how the token or the cryptocurrency which you have built or whatever currency that you have inside your ecosystem is transferred between the people it's more like let's take for an example you have uber in uber you are going to uh you are going to when 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 you have when you're selecting that you have to go to a certain distance there's a lot of uh, mathematical calculation which happens in the background there are lot of uh, things uh, which are part of tokenomics uh, which are part of system design or uh, ecosystem design you can say uh, or market or mechanism design so in there the different kind of decisions are made uh, uh, keeping into account different factors so based on that a decision is made made and uh, simply in web3 also let's suppose you building a product you have a cryptocurrency you go into the ecosystem how you buy that cryptocurrency how the supply of that cryptocurrency will increase and decrease and everything each and every nitty gritty has to be defined this is one way of uh, defining uh, your ecosystem's functionalities that's that's basically about tokenomics how you do it but that is not just that if you want to start in web3 you can start with a very simple thing start reading about different kind of articles around web3 which explains the technology 
so i'll give uh, i'll give an example about myself so i wrote that dissertation i understood the market basically you can start by uh, maybe writing a blog write a blog about web3 while you are writing the blog you will have to push through and read different kind of stuffs and you will figure out okay i need to understand what is web3 how web3 start started what is the future what is the history of web3 what is the future of web3 and uh, what are the different kind of things which i can do by being in web3 and using web3 so those are the things that you need to understand before even joining web3 and you need to know that why is it important even for you to join web3 i mean bahut simple sa question hai aap kyu join karna chahte ho that that should be the first thing that you should ask yourself that aapko web3 join hi kyu karna hai if you are a developer you have a good enough job in web2 if you are an economist like me you have good enough jobs uh, to do in policies you have to good enough job to do in think tanks uh, or even in companies or if you are someone who is into finance or something like that you have a lot of things to do in the normal web2 market but you will have to define for yourself firstly why you have to join web3 to un- to join web3 you need to understand the vision of web3 and once you are aligned with the vision of web3 you can find a niche for you so let's suppose you are a techie or you are a non techie you can find different kind of niches so let's suppose you are a techie you know a certain kind of uh, coding languages while i'm saying a techie or while i'm saying a developer or devrel or tech lead anything like that i'm using an umbrella term i'm not specifying you or uh, caging you with a particular kind of uh, uh, coding language because that is something which differs from platform to platform and product to product that what a person uses but on a larger level if you are a techie who knows how to code who knows how to build products who knows how to build uh, softwares you can get into web3 pretty easily web3 is not using any outwardly uh, tech uh, in the back end it's the same javascript uh, being used for back end writing is the same uh, there's some different kind of libraries for web3 obviously the different kind of apis for web3 which are provided by different products but apart from that it's the same js that is being used is the same react being used for the front end is the same uh, kind of uh, tech stack which is a uh, tech stack like mon which is used for your uh, uh, for your web3 product for the back end or anything like that so you need not to worry okay mujhe nahi aati ye coding language mujhe kuch alag se seek kaise kaam karta hai you just need to understand okay mujhe aisa aisa product banana seekhna hai this is the very basics which i need to know let's suppose you want to become a developer you can be a full stack developer you can be a uh, you can be a front end back end whatever choose one particular thing pin down on few popular companies that you can see and search for jobs in that look at the job descriptions while you look at the job descriptions they have pretty clearly defined what all you need to enter that job role now the next step for you should be is to find someone in web3 don't just launch yourself into web3 without anyone around There's too much information going around and no one is sure about what they are talking so that's why you can get confused a lot so find someone in web3 who can help you navigate through these things uh, so basically you so that as anyone from to whom you can ask different questions you can find different kind of discord groups you can find different uh, different kind of whatsapp groups you can find different kind of online forums where you can go and talk to people and understand okay this is the uh, next step which i can do there are few things like there's uh, learn web 3 dao there's alchemy university there's uh, tph who have who give you a good enough repository to learn for uh, from different things so if you want to become a developer start with one coding language start with creating one simple project which can be creating a one very simple solidity smart contract and if you want to become a devrel basically what is a devrel so in web3 there are different kind of projects there is an l1 blockchain there is an l2 blockchain uh, or if there is some particular kind of product or tool which you have be- built now there are different people so let's suppose there is an l1 uh, there is ethereum blockchain if ethereum has to build a community of developers who can create products on uh, ethereum they'll have they'll need to have someone who can communicate Uh, the very dense technical stuff 
to the beginners like you so when you go to any kind of technical events of these products basically there will be developer relations head who will be talking to you in very simple language that how you can create or, or, or build a product as a coder as a builder on their blockchain so a role of devrel uh, is very simple you need to understand tech and you need to know that how to communicate and talk to people that is very important and third is tech lead basically uh, when you are in a team you can join as a cto you can join in different kind of roles and this is a non exhaustive list there are a lot of other things as a techie which you can do and there there's uh, see web3 is just developing there are few things which are defined and few things which are not defined so when you enter in it you are free to create your own stuff you are free to create your own positions you can find your own niche each and every project that is built in web3 they are pretty open minded so and all of them are startups so they'll give you a lot of space to learn so you can switch between different stuff whenever you want to now if we talk about uh, non techies so non techies think that uh, they don't know coding they don't know how blockchain uh, works at the very fundamental layer so they cannot enter uh, web3 well that is completely wrong without non techies you cannot operate web3 because you need someone to talk to people you need someone to build tokenomics uh, tokenomics uh, for a particular project you need someone to talk to people on social media in a very dumbed down version that okay this is what web3 is all about you can try out this product you need someone to build your product and for that you need a product manager you need someone to write blogs and for that you need content writer so there are abundance of different non tech jobs or non tech roles which you can take up in web3 and there is no limit to it let's suppose let's uh, let's talk about community manager so what is a community manager in web3 basically each and every project just like devrel so basically these developer relations head deal with the developers community the community manager deals with largely the whole community are of the product so i have built a product of uh, streaks which is being used by different kind of community managers in different companies so what will happen is i'll need to have a community manager who can talk to these companies and these uh, people who are using the product participating in giveaways on a discord on a social channels on a social media in different places community manager uh, is basically someone who takes care of the vibe uh, which is in your uh, pro- which is around your project so they have a pretty this is a pretty fun role so if you like talking to people if you like uh, indulging into different kind of products want to talk about the product if you like uh, communi- if you like if you're an extrovert in simple terms you can go for it and for tokenomics very simply you need to know economics the fundamental of it you need to know the tech of blockchain uh, yes it's a mix of techy and non techy i would say it's not uh, uh, completely non techy Uh, there will be lots of maths in it you need to know how to simulate and model and design and design so it's kind of not that uh, simple stuff to get into to be honest but uh, it's a fun thing if you enjoy economics if you enjoy game theory this is the thing for you you will uh, you will love it influencer you know how what influencers do they basically build their online community and they talk to people about different kind of products pretty simple and then you have product managers they basically uh, help you uh, they basically work on the product side that how exactly should it look like so now you see this uh, figma particular so there would be some person who would have thought okay cool there is this drop down but- button which i should get there is this share prototype but- button which i should uh, i should get how this would be uh, working how this will be designed is something which a product manager researches upon and decides upon when you are early on in your startup career when you are building a startup then basically you are everything you are the product manager you are the designer and you are also the techie at times and then there are con- content writers i need not to explain much about them basically you need to write technical content on how a product work you might even uh, have to write technical documentation or you might even have to write threads on uh, twitter which are quite important so basically if you want to be yes one more thing if you want to start uh, in web3 uh, 
go on reddit go on discord and go on twitter these three things are your weapon in simple terms to cut through the noise and reach the right people when you are in uh, when you want to do anything in web3 ah uh, okay one of the best question how to build in web3 every project in web3 is focusing on that uh, this particular thing of educating people on how to build in web3 firstly there is one uh, thing which i tweeted today only in which uh, jaddu krishnamurthy is ask, asking jaddu krishnamurthy is a, a very famous theologian philosopher from india uh, so he basically asks uh, one chill uh, one child are you sensitive are you sensitive to people and his intention behind asking that was that do you understand others pain if there are students going uh, so he gave an example he 6 miles 6 uh, miles from their home to the school and then back back from this to the home total 12 miles so what would you do in such a condition are you sensitive enough to understand that pain and even if you understand that pain that you are sensitive enough to understand understand that you that pain what would be your next step he tells the students that your next step should be to act upon it to find a solution for it even if you th- th- those were 10 12 years 13 years children th- the child says i don't know what to do uh, how w- how would i do that he said go talk to someone ask someone to arrange a bus for them ask someone who can do it but do something at least put the words out the, in in front of the people so how to build in web3 you need to understand you need to be sensitive enough to find problems problems which need to be solved problems which a web2 tech cannot solve and only ai web3 or something like that can solve for you find those problems and try to find a to try to build a solution on that to be honest the first solution that you're going to build is going to be scrappy it's going to be very bad never stick or never put your first product on a pedestal don't spend more than one or two weeks building your first prototype or product it can be very scrappy maybe just a front end website which you put out maybe even it is on just your local host but yes build a very scrappy version talk to people show it to them that is the very initial thing which you can do in uh, do while building in web3 while doing this you will get a lot of feedbacks and the very first time you will realize the idea which you started with is something which people don't need that is they don't want to pay for then you keep exploring to keep solving problems there will be something which will come on to with for yourself while you do that uh, just focus on one thing that don't build a product which uh, is just which is just uh, creating more problems and not solutions which is pretty often you can say in web3 that people create products which create more problems rather than solutions so it it's very simple just go out start exploring different tech and you will find something for you to build how to start uh, very simply there are a lot of repositories there are a lot of uh, okay very important there is a crypto school playlist on youtube by a16z a16z is actually a vc it's a venture fund so if you know about build space or anything like that they are the one who have funded uh, projects like that they are big money they have created the crypto school and they have roughly around 10 to 12 videos where they explain uh, what is web3 how to build product in web3 and everything like that so basically why combinator Uh, startup school stuff but for web3 so go on a16z watch those videos you will be pretty much clear on how to build in web3 and what to do next step you can very simply figure out once you know what to what to build uh before i go on to tokenomics or anything like that i'll pause and i would like to ask people if they have any questions they can shoot yes sir there are questions uh one of the question is my elder brother is a bank and uh, bank employee uh, he is 25 can he enter web3 now and get a job as dev yes 
if if your brother knows coding or even if he does not know coding he can start learning basics basics uh, if you want to be a developer or something like that or back end front end whatever uh, very basic stuff learn html css uh, react this that js and uh, start building projects you need to have a lot of projects uh, in your portfolio in web3 no one cares about what's your age no one ca- see i have seen people see even interns that we have the 15 16 years uh, students they are in from, they are from school they are from college as well and those are old people they are old people as well who have their job apart from that that job they are also working web3 so there's no limit to it there's no age limit the only thing is you need to have passion to learn that's all you need uh, no project says that i want someone who has 10 years of experience or a pro- someone who has built this that web3 is very new uh, the most latest products which are successful that you will see are from 2014 2015 which is the oldest product and successful one if i will talk about is ethereum which, which was built around 2014 and after that the most successful products have come from uh, the time of 2018 to 20 uh, 2021 22 so everything is pretty much new in web3 so uh, very less questions are asked to you that okay you need to know this that so it's pretty easy to get into it and once you get into it everyone is very helpful and everyone everyone will help you navigate uh, through different things got it sir Uh, there is another question uh, with the ai doing the job of a junior dev or as an or an mm-hmm. intern the and the company is only hiring senior devs uh, how will the junior mm-hmm. devs become senior and what difference or extra should a fresher do in 2023 as compared to pre pre ai time okay cool uh, basically not losing your job to ai that is that is a very big question to be honest and the question was around ai how how to be uh, how to be indestructible to be honest or how to be anti fragile if we talk in uh, nasim talib stuff hmm so to save yourself against uh, ai uh, losing your job to ai uh, this very simple thing that you can do as a techie if i would say if i am hiring or if i am doing anything definitely i would look out for senior devs because most of these uh, scrappy works which junior devs used to do that can be done uh, with the help of chat gpt or there are other integrations of course which are possible so in that way basically you have to redefine yourself you will have to bring bring as much value on the table for the company that they prefer you a very simple thing for that is you can build your expertise in building products that is if you have uh, there is this very popular thing i don't know if you guys know about it or not so basically instead of being best in one particular thing being a specialist you should be best in two to three things when you're best in a mix of two to three things and you are very good at it you are kind of indestructible indestructible and no one can replicate the knowledge that you have so if i know web3 if i know economics if i know about art i can do a lot uh, in these two three combinations because what is keeping me creative one is keeping me analytical and what is keeping uh, one is helping me build things so if i have all these three kinds of uh, information and knowledge with me then people would prefer me because they would like okay this person can help us navigate through a lot of stuff and which we will not find in someone else so if you are just a junior developer if you are just a senior developer then the job is in critical condition for both of you but if you are a junior developer who has a knack for creating very intuitive front end if you are a junior developer who knows uh who knows how to build backend very efficiently if you're a senior developer and know how to build efficient backend architecture and you also know how to incorporate it in the larger ecosystem of the product so basically if i'm building figma uh or if i'm building any product you need to define the architecture of that product including the tech stack on a very large level and while you do that and you also understand the business side of it you also understand the product side of it 
then any company will run after you and they'll say okay you stick around you come and work with us because you're not just bringing on the technical insights you also in bringing in insights from products side so you are bringing uh, so you need to give as much value which ai or agi cannot replicate that is the only uh, possible thing which you can do to uh, to stay alert and uh, fight against ai in the race of getting this job you got it yeah any more questions uh, no there are questions but we have already answered them through the event so uh, no need to ask okay. them cool cool okay if if anyone has any particular kind of questions related to web3 tokenomics or uh, how to build in web3 how to build a product in web3 then they can ask the question right now or uh, else uh, we can move forward we can move forward for right now okay cool sounds good then uh, i'll just end with a very simple thing that when when you are doing something or uh, when you are building something in web 3 in web 2 or in general whatever just don't uh, don't uh, cage yourself in particular kind of notion because you can do you can do lot just by being a bit risky you need to take a lot of risk to understand different kind of th- things uh, in life and so jumping from web 2 to web 3 can be a big leap for a lot of people but while you're doing it you should evaluate your options definitely but uh, you need to have a driving factor you need to have a dream to do something impactful you need to have a dream or an idea of something which you want to build it can be anything it can be very small it can be very big so you should have one motivating factor always with you and uh, and one crazy risky dream for you so that is something which i like talking a lot about if someone has a crazy idea if someone has something which is very ambitious uh, ambitious which a normal person would not even address they'll just shoo you off so i like talking about those ideas you might fail you might succeed but uh, if the, there's there's in this opportunity if you try so yeah do shoot me a dm uh, on any of the social channels which are available uh, twitter linkedin instagram and uh, i would be happy to talk to you help you out in any way possible so uh, there there are different opportunities which you can take up in web3 if there is anything which i can help with i'll try my best to do that thank you sir thank you very much for the valuable session and people also uh, i will share the i will share a uh, linkedin id and, and whatever socials i have of the sir uh, to the in the announcement channel wait a minute i will do that just right now and i have already shared the socials of streaks am i pronouncing it right sir streaks yep yep streaks that's that's yeah. uh, so i have already shared the social of streaks uh, you can definitely check it out uh, this people are doing a great job and wait a minute i am just sharing the socials of this uh, mm. yeah here it is so yes in the announcement channel you will get the socials of the both the sir and the streaks so you can uh, definitely reach out to him directly if you have any further further question thank you very much sir for the amazing knowledge let's connect again and thank you very much yeah thank you so much uh, you're doing a good job at squad growth and uh, creating something for and helping out all the students in college i know how it confusing it can be while you are in college okay kya karna chahiye kya nahi karna chahiye it's it's, yes. it's it's a very confusing life i know and with ai coming in i can understand how anxious uh, this can creep into people mm-hmm. so uh, i would say like just just stay chill don't worry about things and do anything crazy which you have in your mind you'll figure out something in your life and uh, shorya is there to help you always and squad go <laughs> thank you sir thank you very much see you people hope thank you enjoyed you, the event hope you learned something new see you soon sir let's connect in the next event till then bye bye for sure